Good day guys, hope everyone is doing okay. Before I get into it again, my condolences to the family of Luton Shelton. Anyways, on a much lighter note, I just want to bring you guys attention to our current financial and administrative crisis currently taking place in League 1, the French League. A surprisingly very underreported story, one that I have not heard a lot of people addressing and to be honest with you initially I myself was not going to do, I was not going to report on this story. But because of the severity of the matter, how bad it has gotten and its potential implications and the fact that no one else is talking about it. I decided to talk a bit about it. Now, what is taking place in the top two divisions in France is that French clubs are currently facing a massive, a massive rather, financial crisis due to three major factors or financial shocks, if you want to call it that. The first being the premature end of last year's season causing big holes in club's budget as a result of the empty stadiums and non-payment of TV rights or TV rights payments that were due to the club's last season. The second major financial shock being the continuation into this season of stadiums being desolate because of the COVID-19 restrictions. And the third and most impactful financial shock on the LFP, which is the governing body for professional football in France, is the collapse of a billion dollar broadcast TV rights deal with a Spanish company called MediaPro. And this is going to be the main topic of discussion in this video because this situation involving Media Pro has really left French clubs in a very precarious financial position, one that could lead to financial ruin for a number of French clubs and the league and French football as a whole. And when I say ruin, I mean complete ruin as in clubs potentially going defunct. So the situation is that Media Pro and the LFP League de Football Professional, which is the governing body again for French football, French club football rather, struck a television rights deal of upwards of 3.25 billion euros over four seasons which means that the leagues in France would be getting over 800 million euros per year. This deal was so big that it was the second biggest TV deal in European history behind only the English Premier League and it offered French clubs around 60% increase in tele television revenue than the previous deal with a company called Canal Plus. And when you think about it, it was really absurd that Ligue 1 was making more money than La Liga and the Italian Serie A and even the Bundesliga to a lesser extent. My mind tells me that part of the thinking probably behind Media Pro offering this kind of a deal was they probably thought that there was returns to be made because of the fact that two of the world's biggest superstars play in League 1 in Neymar Jr. and Kylian Mbappe as well as the fact that Paris Saint-Germain is a brand that is emerging and growing globally at a very rapid pace. 
and also probably because France are current world champions as well that might have had a part to play in it as well right and this deal was supposed to run from 2020 from the 2020 season to 2024 however media pro had to pull the plug on the deal after incurring serious financial difficulty having paid less than 10 percent of the proposed three billion dollar deal and this is now where the problem lies for a number of french clubs who are currently in financial limbo because media pro defaulted on their contractual obligations media pro was already in a precarious financial situation even before the deal and by april the situation worsened when their credit rating was downgraded Media Pro tried to pass this off as an implication of the pandemic and there was no need to worry as they would recover quickly and it surprised many people when they were able to pay the first monthly installment of 172 million euros a day early in August. But the real trouble started in September when Media Pro refused to pay the LFP their October installment of 172 million euros. And because of the disappointing subscription figures for its Telefoot channel, the December payment was also missed. Look, there was just a lot of issues with this deal from the jump. For the second installment, due in October, Media Pro asked if they could defer the payment and the CEO, Joame Roars, admitted that they were trying to renegotiate the deal. And it was widely reported Media Pro were looking for a 25% discount for this particular 2020-2021 season. Roars tried to use the COVID-19 pandemic as an excuse when he asked to renegotiate the deal in October. The problem with this excuse, however, is that viewership numbers of football have remained robust across Europe and in some cases the ratings have even soared. And this is because more people are at home because of the restrictions. So this excuse presented by Media Pro just wasn't a believable excuse. But Media Pro stated it was obvious COVID-19 was affecting a lot of aspects of them being able to exploit their rights. Stating that we want to renegotiate the contract for this season and we are not questioning the project. But the bars and restaurants are closed and advertising is down. Right? But the thing about this debacle is that no other leagues are currently encountering these kinds of problems with their TV rights deals. Anyways, with this deal basically about to be dissolved, League Oon's previous partner before Media Pro, Canal Plus, are readying themselves to step in to fill the void left by Media Pro, albeit at a much lower rate than what Media Pro was paying. As a matter of fact, some say lower than even their own previous agreement with League One. And this might very well be true. The fact is League One right now is negotiati negotiating rather from a position of weakness and desperation. But before things went south, 
and got to where they are now. With Ligun in a financial crisis, there was a lot of optimism surrounding this deal. In the initial stages, the excitement and the buzz around the deal with Media Pro was so great that the LFP was very eager to annul the 2019-2020 season that was postponed because of COVID. The main reason being the lure of starting and preserving this new television deal with Media Pro in August without a hitch. Canal Plus chairman Maxime Sada at the time insisted that Media Pro overpaid, labeling their price completely unreasonable. Sada stated, I am disappointed that we didn't keep the rights, but the price was completely unreasonable. It was impossible for us to make these sort of figures work and I believe it's impossible for any actor in the sector to make these figures work. So guys, you see even from then, there were warnings and question marks as to how Media Pro was going to pull this off. Media Pro stated that they would need about 3.5 million subscriptions, or subscribers rather and that this would be sufficient to cover their costs. Sada on the other hand disagreed, predicting they would need about 7 million, right? But in the end, Media Pro didn't get close to either number and ended up having to ask for the 25% reduction in their rights bill for the current campaign and obviously this discount was refused. One of the things that made Media Pro start to realize that they had a real serious issue is when they failed to secure 100% of the rights, losing an important package that included the first pick of the week's top game to Bean Sports. Bean Sports then sold these rights to Knal Plus, Media Pro's main rival. Overall, Canal Plus had acquired rights for two of the top 10 games in every round of fixtures, hence reducing the need, the need for Canal Plus, France's biggest pay television operator, to make a deal with Media Pro for the other games. That means Media Pro were left holding expensive rights without the largest and most viable platform willing to buy them. Hence, they quickly turned to another alternative, which was to try and start their own channel, Telefoot, which was so bad it offered very little value beyond the matches. So guys, the platform ended up not performing well, and it turned out not to be a viable av avenue rather to recoup costs as it failed miserably and with the channel doing so poorly even breaking even became impossible for media pro media pro had to eventually move to place itself under court protection from creditors taking advantage of a new legal process in place to protect struggling companies from their creditors because of the coronavirus pandemic. Ligun was hence unable to enforce the contract. In the short term, Ligun has taken out loans to cover the non-payment of these TV rights and to soften the financial blow. But the fact of the matter is, this is not a viable option on a long term basis. But in the meantime, Media Pro will continue to show Ligun games for now until a new buyer can be found. But the fact is, things are looking very sticky 
with Canal Plus offering less than what they used to pay before MediaPro took over. But what is surprising is that despite the amount of concerns around MediaPro's speculative business model and cash flow, League Un still got into business with MediaPro and ignored the many warning signs. The biggest warning sign of them all was the Syria R president pulling out of a broadcast deal with Media Pro before Ligun decided to embark on this journey with Media Pro. And Syria R pulled out of the deal with Media Pro over fears Media Pro might struggle to pay for their share of the rights for the 2018 to 2021 season as media pro failed to provide the required financial guarantees that they could afford it former nice president gothier ganai gothier ganai i think and forgive me for messing that up because i i know i messed that up but the former nice president had expressed similar concerns to those raised by Syria A, stating that he wondered if the relevant authorities had done any proper background checks on Media Pro. In an interview with Get Football News France, he stated, What worries me is, did the league take all the necessary guarantees to make sure that Media Pro could actually deliver and pay the money they said they would. The fact of the matter is, this company Media Pro has been accused of achieving success in Spain using questionable methods. An unnamed French club president at the time of the deal even told the Financial Times of Media Pro's co founder Joame Roars. At best, he's not orthodox. At worst, he's a pirate. Other red flags included the fact that after the agreement was made, it took several months for the agreement to be signed and when it was eventually signed, it had no bank guarantees. Also, Four years ago, a U.S. affiliate of Media Pro, Imagina Media Visual, was implicated in the FIFA bribery scandal. Earlier in 2021, one of Media Pro's co-founders was charged with wire fraud, money laundering, and racketeering conspiracy. And the LFP also brushed aside the fact that Media Pro had no history in French football. President of Paris Saint Germain, undoubtedly France's biggest club and one of the country's biggest brands, has been very critical of Ligue 1, calling for an investigation into the bidding process and for legal action against former LFP CEO Didier Quillot, who oversaw the sale. I am suspecting the PSG president might be under the impression that there might have been corruption here, like bribery or something to that effect, in an attempt to make sense of this daft piece of business. Since the deal broke down, French teams have been on the brink and barely keeping their heads above water with the help of two government bailouts. However, unfortunately for French clubs, a third bailout is not expected to happen and already French government ministers have, have spoken out against this. One particular minister, the Minister of Education and Sports, was quoted as saying 
we cannot in business life take risk of this type and then call in the state like a firefighter with public money to somehow cover the costs. Some pretty strong words there from the minister and a clear indication that it is going to be three strikes and you're out as the French government does not seem likely to provide assistance to the LFP at a third time of asking. And you have to remember as well that the French government themselves is under serious economic duress as a result of COVID as many of their industries and one of their major industries in particular, the tourism sector, has of course been hit hard by this global pandemic. One could go as far as saying the tourism sector has been decimated and especially given the fact that a number of the country's citizens would be feeling the impact of the coronavirus, it is politically not in their government's best interest to be helping football clubs, some of them owned by billionaires, some of the richest men in the world, to get out of a pickle. But the fact is, not all of the owners are mega-rich billionaires, some of the owners in France, their largest asset in their portfolio is the football club. And those are the ones that are in really serious trouble. But now with the benefit of hindsight, many individuals are coming out against the LFP with scathing criticism. But the fact is, not everyone expressed concern at the time when the deal was made. A number of individuals in French football welcomed the deal with open arms. Lyon President Michel Arlas said that the deal was, quote, a blessed day for French football. Lorient President Loic Ferry believed it could elevate the status of Ligue 1. So, a number of people in French football really welcomed the deal and thought that the record-breaking revenue from the TV rights would really revolutionise French club football and by extension French football overall. But now some individuals within French football have started to express worries over the future of several league one clubs. Reem president Jean-Pierre Callot stated that when you don't have any TV rights money, ticketing money or hospitality money, you'll have to explain to me how are we supposed to keep our business running. The fact of the matter is that these aforementioned revenue streams account for most of the money required to run a football club. If the league cannot get a new loan, which is far from assured at this point, I think that in February or March there will be a lot of clubs who will be unable to pay their players and employees. Big statement there coming from Jean-Pierre Callot. So the LFP's lack of due diligence and failure to seek guarantees was obviously catastrophically naive and incompetent. And you know clubs are really starting to feel the heat because of this lack of judgment. Leading to this very poor decision to enter into this arrangement with MediaPro that had clear red flags from the get-go and what makes it worse is that this could not have come at a more disastrous time for French football. 
in the middle of a global pandemic resulting in empty stadiums and absolutely no monies being received from the gates. So that just compounds the issue and amplifies the potential ramifications of this poor judgment call. The ramifications of this bad deal would have been disastrous anyway. You look at it though, COVID or no COVID. But the fact is that right now, French clubs have very little revenue coming in. Most of the revenue that they would have budgeted for at the start of the season has now evaporated because the fact is football clubs receive most of their revenue from TV rights and gate receipts and these two sources in most cases are the, last, are the largest sources of revenue and at the very least in their top three revenue streams. For now, the LFP and French clubs are surviving due to the pair of government-backed bank loans. But of course, when those run out, you know it's trouble. And a number of clubs in the first and second division are seriously worried about going bankrupt or even worse, being forced to shut down their operations. As for the Media Pro deal, it is basically dead in the water, as after mediation in the French commercial courts, Media Pro has agreed to pay about a hundred million euros of the outstanding three hundred and twenty four million euros owed so far. This amount is over ten percent of the over 3 billion euro contract signed earlier last year. To make matters worse, Canal Plus smell blood and are playing hardball and they might also be carrying feelings because of how their previous arrangement with Ligun ended after last season was abruptly cancelled, especially when all of the other top five leagues eventually resumed play. Already we have started to see the consequences of this entire debacle start to play out. Lille have lost their owner Gerard Lopez. The Luxembourg businessman was forced to sell the club as a result of this deal going bust. And this is so unfortunate in my opinion because I thought he was doing an excellent job as his ownership was the main reason for that club's resurgence. And the club was even mounting a serious title challenge. And if it's one thing Lego needs right now is a decent title race with clubs mounting a serious challenge to annual eventual winners PSG. He also did a good job at balancing the books whilst in the midst of this resurgence and returning the club to Europe. One of the reasons for the club's success under Lopez as well is that Lille did a very good job scouting and developing young talent, leading to big sales and huge profits. Since 2017-2018, Lille have come second only to Lyon in Ligue 1 in transfer sales, having made over £100 million in the period leading up to now. However, the problem has arisen because to buy Lille, Lopez borrowed almost a quarter of a billion euros from JP Morgan and an investment fund called Elliott Management. And even though Lille have paid back about half of those loans, the other half is due by the latest August. 
and out of concern that the loans won't be paid back, Elliott Management requested that Lopez sell the club, to which he obliged. All of this has been caused by the horrible financial year for French clubs that was 2020. Lille even faced the real and distinct possibility of actually winning Ligue 1 but still being relegated because of their bad financial state as French football's financial watchdog the DNC has already made threats of relegation if they don't meet their financial obligations. Can you imagine that? I've never heard of a club winning a league title and getting relegated in the same year. If that happens, that would be absolutely absurd. That would be crazy, man. Like, I've never heard of that ever happening. That would be so crazy. Nîmes president has also reportedly told his players that the club won't be able to pay their salaries by March if a new deal was not found. So all in all, clubs already have started to show cracks and to show serious issues as a result of the lack of cash flow. So what is taking place is that Media Pro handed back four years of rights under its control and less than a third of the more than 300 million euros it owes. One team director described the situation as a total disaster. The chief executive of another club said that the situation coupled with the financial effects of the COVID pandemic was quote hugely damaging. Right? No kidding. The almost 60% increase in TV revenues also led teams to spend more on recruitment in the last half season. These additional costs have now become burdensome on many French clubs. Many suspect the clubs will look to foreign investors to bail them out in return for heavily discounted equity or outright sales. But the question must be asked, would this be an attractive option for potential investors investing millions in a league where the governing body of professional football in that jurisdiction is making brash and serious decisions like this that could potentially ruin their investment? PSG estimates that it will lose over $100 million because of this TV rights crisis. Another major revenue stream that will likely be affected by this crisis is revenues from player exports, which is one of the French League's biggest revenue streams. Exports can reach as high as $900 million in a summer window. This may drop by a third in the next summer window because French clubs might be so desperate to get rid of their players because they can't afford to pay them. St. Etienne's president said it best, no business can run without resources for six months. The French government is also trying to play its part, offering to reduce club's tax bill as a way to help ease the burden on the respective clubs. But the fact of the matter is, the LFP should never have done business with a company with so many red flags. Added to the fact that the deal was just too good to be true. Naivety, irresponsible and poor decision making could potentially cost French football dearly. Anyways guys, that's it on this particular story. 
again french clubs in a very serious financial situation and hopefully they can get themselves out of the mess that they created in the first place okay so until next time take care and keep safe